Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well. My name is Luke and welcome to my channel. I've been hard at work recently coming up with a new method of SHO processing to share with all you guys out there. I've not seen anybody else doing it like this uh, and I'm really feeling quite proud of myself. It's turning out really well, I think. It's easy to follow along with and you really don't need that many tools. I'm going to take you through the whole thing right now. I will include it in the description box down below the data that I'm going to be working on this actual tutorial with so you can work alongside me as I think that's a great way to learn and hopefully you're going to get something out of this and figure out a new way to process your images. Now, for now, I'm just calling it Luke's Rainbow SHO, as I can't really think of anything that describes it better. Why rainbow? Well, because we're getting these beautiful kind of spectrum uh, of colors going across the images. So hopefully you can see it's transitioning from burgundies to coppers to reds, golds, yellows, greens into teal, into blues, purples. You name it, it's in there and it all looks nice and natural. Um, you will see in just a moment how we're getting this effect. It's nothing destructive. In fact, it's uh, probably one of the simplest ways of processing I've ever came up with. And I think that you're going to enjoy it and you're going to be able to use this method and create something a little bit different to what you see everybody else doing, which is always quite cool. Now, what you will download in uh, the description box is something that looks a little bit like this set of tools right here. These are my friend Bill Blanchens color masking tools so you should see all of those if you don't have any of these appearing on your screen just right click select icons select all icons right click again and arrange icons that should all appear for you that's a common issue i see uh, pop up in the comments boxes you will need a method of taking the stars out of your image ideally star exterminator does the best job out of all the tools that i've ever used with it and i'll also include for you if you are using star exterminator my uh stars Rescreening tools uh, that I came up with just a really super simple thing that automates semi automates the process of putting stars back in um, You'll have an image that looks like this. I just want you to take the stars out of it So you're starting from this position right here. So you've got stars and a starless image That's the introduction taken care of now. Here's how it's gonna work So we're not actually gonna work on this image just right at this exact moment in time. We're gonna create a new clone and this is kind of a concept I'm going to just refer to as sacrificial cloning because we're going to get we're going to get nasty with it. Okay, we're going to really manipulate it into exactly what we want and then get rid of it as soon as we've got a mask from it. So I created a sacrificial clone. I'm going to open up the curves tool now, create a preview, and working just on the red as you can see right here. I'm going to bring up those reds. So I'm going to be quite brutal with it. Don't be uh, worried about this looking bad uh, just try and follow some basic rules of not leaving the background glowing in the color that you're wanting to uh, mask so <clears throat> as you can hopefully see there we've got the reds really popping out of this image now even in this background region the edges of the image are still slightly glowing red so i'm going to bring down this low point slightly more that looks about right i'd say and I think just one more touch of red right there will do it. Now we've got a disgusting looking image, but as I've said, it's just sacrificial. So now I'm going to use this to make a red mask for our main image. As you can see, we've got a really nice detailed red mask right there. We're going to run mask blur over it yeah, just a couple of times so that it's still detailed. But the transitions to what's going to be other colors in the image are softened just that little bit so we're going to move this to one side now to keep it in view and get rid of that sacrificial clone we're going to make another clone this time we're going to target the greens in the image so curves once again bring up that midpoint drop down the uh, the shadows end of things so you can see just the greens in the image really being targeted if you want to bring them up just a little bit more it's a good time to employ some saturation as we are just trying to create a mask from this i'll go ahead and apply that and i think just a just a little tickle more on the uh, the green slider is going to do a good job for us that looks great very nice so again once once again it's a really disgusting looking image but it's just going to be sacrificed we all we want from it is a green mask which we've got Close that down, smooth out this mask ever so slightly with mask blur. A couple of passes should do it. 
edges are ever so slightly still aggressive, but it doesn't really matter. For the sake of this, move it across to one side, and one more sacrificial clone. Let's go uh, create now a blue on it. So uh, once again, create that preview. We're using your curves. I want you to bring out the blues in the image. Just make them really pop up. Don't have to do, do anything too crazy with this one. As you can see, the blue is fairly strong in this target. Uh, that looks pretty good. It's separate now. The blue in the image is separate from all the rest of the colors. So our mask should be very accurate indeed. So we want blue mask. Drop that on the sacrificial clone. Close down the cloned image and blur the mask. All right, one more pass. That looks pretty Damn good to me, I'm gonna move this to one side. And now, working on the actual image that all these kind of sacrificial ma um, clones have came from, we're gonna start once again with that red. So I'm gonna drop this onto the image and things are gonna to come together really quite quickly now. So I'm gonna create a preview once again with curves. Going back to working just on the reds right now. I'm gonna bring up those reds, as you can see. It's working on just the part we wanted. So the masks are working perfectly i usually like to introduce just a little bit of green when i'm working on the red channel too and bring down very slightly the bottom end of the green slider as you can see it gives you that beautiful if it would uh, <laughs> if it would work <laughs> dynamic um transition across that particular channel as you can see it's looking pretty neat it's going from coppers and reds to kind of yellows on the very brightest parts I'll introduce a small amount of saturation at this point too, as I like the way that that looks. And then I think we're going to try and bring out just these very faint background regions again, just by working on just red this time. So I'm going to bring up the shadowed regions slightly. So I'm just getting those in view and bring down the midpoint slightly. So hopefully you can see the effect that that's had if I just cycle it back and forth a few times. Looks pretty good. All right, reset that tool, close down that preview and remove the mask. So mask and remove. Let's work now on the green mask. Drop that on the image, open up a preview once again, working this time on the green. So let's bring it up. Now you can see if I went too far, this to start to look ridiculous. That's getting out of the... Uh, scope of what this is about so we just wanted to bring it up a little bit until you can start to see you really want to be looking at the image while you're doing this pay no real attention to your curves window just keep your mouse on it until you're just bringing up those masked parts very slightly i find boost of saturation works well at this point to really start to bring in some really interesting transitions again this is one of the things i like to see the most in an image personally is uh beautiful soft transitions between colors so we'll reset that like there yeah. and leave it at that i will close down that and remove the mask really quickly show you what we're working with at this point so we've got these nice separate colors going across the image and finally we're working in a hurry here but blue mask once again curves transformation blue window only at this point i'm going to bring up those blues so that's bringing some real nice color into that image i oftentimes like to add just a little bit of green into the blue channel as you can see that brings up the teal regions and separates those away from the rest of the image too and uh, overall i mean you can see the effect that it's having it's quite notable and i think it really really adds to the image makes it stand out and uh, just frankly looks a lot better than the day in day out sho that you see play, posted everywhere there's nothing wrong with those images but i like to see something a little bit different and i'm uh, <laughs> i'll just say i'm feeling pretty proud of myself for coming up with this one it's a nice simple process and you know it really brings out the colors now we're ready to put the stars back in effectively i will just use curves once more and uh, pop a little s into this just because why not as you can see the effect whoops that that has had just brought up again that dynamic effect on the image and uh, that looks pretty good to me i'll go ahead close curves and i will use now these rescreening tools so stylus for rescreening on the stylus image stars for rescreening on the stars image 
and then rescreen stars stars on any of the images don't worry about it and you now have a beautiful rainbow sho image which stands out i think among the crowd i mean if you do kind of like search around there's nothing wrong with these images once again there's many images that are far more beautiful than what i'm taking but they do look very similar you have to admit you know they they look like they've got a thumbprint attached to them and it's plain to see what's going on they all look very similar this looks different and i think in a good way i really like the way that we've got these beautiful smooth color transitions from this really simple method that i've came up with i'm uh I'm really chuffed with it. I'm looking forward to using this for images going forwards and uh, hopefully some of you guys out there using it too. I'd love to see if you get some results from this uh, on your own images, on this image, wherever you like. Just tag me on Instagram or if you have no way of contacting me and you'd still like to show me stuff, which is always cool with me, then do drop an email and I will do my best to get to it. Um, I do get a lot of emails, so I'll be just totally straightforward and honest with you. So I probably can't reply to absolutely everything every time um but yeah that's about it for this i hope that you've enjoyed this new look on a different way of processing sho images uh and i hope that you get some use out of it too and start creating more beautiful images to share with your friends and family and uh that's what it's really all about so as always thanks very much indeed to each and every one of you out there for watching and to all of you who are giving your support monthly on YouTube memberships, Patreon, and even as daft it sounds occasionally, <laughs> PayPal donations and things like that. It's crazy. I can't thank you enough for all the support that you guys are giving. Uh, it means a great deal to me and it helps me an awful lot with my life. So, um, yeah, gratitude and happiness. What more could you want? I hope that you've enjoyed this and uh, I look forward to seeing you all in the next one. So until then, guys. Look after yourselves and uh, hopefully clear skies.